Well, it's official. The first thing that I did in 2024 was to break chess.com's servers. No, I'm obviously kidding. I didn't break their servers, but I did try to log in this morning to record this video and I couldn't get in. So I guess so many people have the New Year's resolution of playing chess that it broke the servers. I don't actually know if that's true, but I imagine that's probably what happened. Anyway, I'm over here on Lee Chess, which is why the board looks different. Hope this is okay. I've got the green, the red, and the, the blue here. And I mean, it's, it's probably good enough for us, right? Anyway, we have white to play and save the game. This is one of the most incredible endgame positions that you will see in 2024. Probably the most incredible position you'll see in 2024. Anyway, white's pieces over here are actually stuck. So white's going forward, which means the pawns are stuck because you can't move into pieces, right? The rooks are obviously trapped and the bishop is trapped. So what do we have left? We have a king and a pawn and black has two pawns and a bishop. And essentially, we have to figure out, can, can we stop these pieces from like black getting a queen and just checkmating us without using any of our other pieces, okay? So before I say too much and say anything else, it's white to play and save the game. What do you think the move is here for white? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is king to e4. And white is obviously trying to go hunt down the pawns. So that kind of makes sense, right? Black's going to go check here. I just noticed I have the... Uh, the, the, the circle's on to show me what the legal moves are. That's kind of funny. Anyway, he goes check here, and we go up here, all right? And we're trying to, you know, hunt the pawns down, right? Black plays bishop to c6, attacking our pawn, and now we have a decision. Where do we move the king to? White to play and save the game. Only one move is correct here. If you had a chance to look at that, the move is king to d6. And you're going to see why this is important in just a second. For those of you who thought that maybe king to d4 is the move, here's the problem with this. Black's going to take our pawn. Now we have the bishop and two pawns that we have to stop with just our king. Let's say we go check. I mean, not check. Sorry, just move the king there. Bishop's going to come back. And then what black is going to do is play d5. And then they're going to loop the bishop around to this configuration. And then they're going to push the pawn. And it kind of looks like we have a blockade, sorry, like this. But we don't. Because it's our turn, we have to move our king away. It doesn't really matter. As soon as we move it, the other pawn pushes, right? Now we're in this bad situation where the pawn just keeps pushing. And, you know, this is just too much for us to handle. Black's going to basically do the same thing. It doesn't really matter where we go. The other pawn becomes a queen and we lose, okay? So that's the idea. Going all the way back here here, here, of why we can't go king to d4, we have to go king to d6, okay? Of course, black still takes the pawn, and it still looks like we're in bad shape here, right? The pawn is defended, this pawn is about to start pushing, like, what are we going to do? White to play and save the game. If you had a chance to look at that, the only move here, king to c7. This is actually a brilliant move, and we are forcing black to give us one of the pawns, because if Black doesn't do anything, we're going to take this pawn. But if they do move that pawn, then it blocks the bishop, right? And we can take this pawn. So essentially we're saying, look, you choose, we're going to take the other pawn. And it's interesting now because black actually does have a choice and either one gives them a pass pawn. And you might think like, wait a second, Nelson, how in the world is this going to work for us? So let's just start with d5 and then we'll come back to look at b5 after this. Okay, so let's say black plays d5. Of course, we capture the pawn and then black just pushes. And what do we play now as white? We've got a chance to look at that. We're going to attack the bishop over here and just ignore the pawn. And why are we doing that? Because after d3, we're going to grab the bishop. And after d2, it doesn't really matter because once black gets the queen, they still can't checkmate us, right? They don't have enough pieces because they need the king to help the queen to actually deliver the checkmate and the king can never move right? The pawns are trapping it. And of course, you don't want to take any of these pieces with the queen or it allows the rooks to come into the game somehow. And so it's just a draw, right? Just a draw. So that is why, going back here, most likely black will not play d5. They'll play instead uh, b5. And uh, one more thing I should mention, after um, d5 takes here, king here, you could, you could save the bishop if you're black, right? You could move back somewhere. And you could actually try this move, which I should have mentioned, which is very clever because they're cutting off our king. And so what do we do against this, actually? 
if you had a chance to look at that, the move is king to a3. And essentially, we're just going to sneak in this way, and we're still just in time to catch this pawn. And there's nothing that black can do. As soon as they move, we come in, and they're not in time, and we can actually just take the pawn. So if they save the bishop, they're not able to get the queen. Uh, or if they give up the bishop, then they can get the queen, but they don't have enough pieces. So either way, it's it's a draw. Okay. So because of that, going all the way back here, when black had the decision, which pawn do they want to abandon? This is the better option. Okay. They give us the D pawn and they push the B pawn. So of course, uh, we're going to take the pawn. And then black says, thank you very much. I'm off to the races here with this past pawn. Look how far behind our king is. So what's the move here as white to save the game? You had a chance to look at that the move is king to d6 and we are going to try our best to hunt down the pawn but of course we're not going to be in time so b3 what do we do now got a chance to look at that the move is king to c5 again hunting down the pawn as best we can but black plays b2 and we're not in time so what do we play here only move king to b4 we're still trying to take the bishop because if we take the bishop well you, you, we've seen this before, right? It's a draw. The queen can't checkmate with, because the king can't help, right? However, black is too smart for that and says, yeah, I see what you're going to do. So what I'm going to do is just move my bishop really, really anywhere. I'm going to save it. And guess what? You're, you're not in time. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. What do we do? Why to play and save the game? Only one move. If you had a chance to look at that, the move is king to a3. And if you've learned nothing, if you've learned nothing in 2023, you should have at least learned to look for stalemate traps in these crazy endgame puzzles, right? And that is exactly what we're doing here. If black gets the queen, look at this, look at this, look at this. That is a stalemate. Keep in mind, all of these pieces cannot move over here as well. And the game is a draw. You say, well, black doesn't have to get a queen because that's the other thing I learned in 2023 from watching Chess Vibes puzzles. You can underpromote to a rook. Guess what? The rook and the bishop are not powerful enough to just checkmate alone. They need the king's help. But again, the king is stuck. And if at any moment you decide to like try to take some of these pieces, it just gets worse for black. Because then the rooks come into the game and that you have no chances, right? Probably you'll lose. So it's just a draw. Of course, you could also get a knight. But again... Without the help from the king, you cannot deliver the checkmate. And the only other thing that you could try, uh, let's see, what else could you try? You, you could try moving the bishop to a different square. But the interesting thing is, it doesn't matter where you move it to, because when we play king to a3, the bishop's always going to be controlling that square, because that's where it moved from, right? Even if you moved it to anywhere else. And again, you, you always are going to have the same problem of a stalemate. Fascinating stuff, right? I mean, William Shinkman, like... He's become one of my favorite composers. These just these brilliant, brilliant solutions. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and it's a good start to the new year for you. I'll see you next time. And, oh, by the way, quick announcement. There's going to be a tournament on Thursday night. I already scheduled the live stream, so you should see that. We're going to do a lesson and then a tournament on chess.com, assuming the servers are good to go by then. But it should be a lot of fun talking about the Ponziani opening. Anybody can join. You just need a chess.com account and and you know come come watch the live stream we'll, we'll do it thursday night i'll see you guys there and happy new year stay sharp play smart and take care